Praise God. God is good, amen? I'm telling you, I'm, I'm really blessed and excited for what God has in store for us because we are entering into a time that as Christians we've never experienced. And, um, and I know that we, we have to be prepared. And the word that the Lord gave me today isn't anything that we all don't know. It's really a refresher. But it's what he had me uh, put together to share today. And, um, you know, I just want you to listen with an open heart because God is, you know, God is bringing us into a very deep place in him. We've got to know the word. We've got to know his presence. We have to know how to tap into his presence and, and really linger at his feet. That's where God's bringing us as a body. I mean, it's not like we never were supposed to be there, but we, you know, I would say the church at large has gotten away from that. And, um, and I'm, I'm, I'm thrilled for the presence of the Lord that's been here. And, but, but God says we've only been at the, the edge of the seashore. And he's challenging us, and he's saying, I want you to come into that deeper place. And, and so um, we, I'll, I'll just share the message. So anyway, so part of it, when I started to prepare for it, the Lord was talking to me about our words, the words that we speak. As we know, the Bible says that death and life are in the power of our tongue. We know that our words are extremely powerful, right? So um, I keep forgetting I have this over here, help me work this thing. The words that we speak in faith are powerful. And so our words are seeds. I was sharing this on Wednesday, that um, our words that we speak, it, it's like when you're planting a seed in the ground, you have an expectation that if you're planting a tomato seed, that you're going to get tomatoes, right? Yeah. So when we're planting our words and we're decreeing the word of God, we have to have that expectation that there's going to be growth. Something's going to come out of that. Amen? Yeah. But sometimes we can go through the motion. And we're not really having that expectation of breakthrough. So God is, 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 is calling us, and he's saying, listen, shift your mindsets. We heard it today. Break the limitations off where we may have limited ourselves, or, or some of us might just have a mental ascent of the word where it's not come into our heart. And when, it, when we have that revelation where we're united in faith with Holy Spirit, that's when we have that break or anointing, that breakthrough. So we have the Spirit of God within us. We have God's DNA within us, right? I mean, we all believe that. So when we became born again, the Spirit of God came within us, you know, resides within us, and we have His DNA in us. And that, um, you know, so I wrote here, I, I got this off of um, uh, Gmail, but... Um, I remember Charles Capps speaking this. I remember Kenneth Hagin talking about this and Kenneth Copeland. It says here that psychologists have found that our subconscious minds interpret what it hears very literally, for better or for worse. Um, all right, how do I do this to get the next one up? Sorry, I forgot. Yeah, I'll use it. All right. Don't close it. Don't. All right. <laughs> I, I might try to work it. I don't know. Unfortunately, it's often, often the latter as we unconsciously sabotage our success by simply using language that undermines our opinions, amplifies our problems, chips away at our confidence to handle them successfully. The words that come out of your mouth create the reality we inhabit. All right? The words that we speak create the, the reality that we inhabit. All right? So what words are you speaking? What, what are your words of life? You say, oh, that's ridiculous. I'm not saying we can't say what's happening, but don't keep rehearsing it as your mantra over and over and over and over again that this isn't happening, this isn't happening, complaining and murmuring, because that will keep you in a funky place. And God is saying, I want you to walk as victorious, more than conquering people. And so when we learn to abide, and I'm going to talk a little bit about that, when we learn to just trust the Lord, and I'm not saying just trust him, but get into that deeper place of trust with him, that we're going to see the breakthrough that God as our Father wants us to have. And so, um, so anyway, we don't realize how impactful our words are. We don't realize 
that, I mean, let's think about it as kids, you know, like if you had people or teachers or family members calling your name, saying you'll never amount to anything, you're this, you're that. I mean, it really hurt our hearts, right? Yeah. And it does have impact. And we have to forgive and we have to come out of agreement with a lie, break a soul tie with some of those lies, and then say, wait a second, Lord, I know who I am in you. That's why we have to have a revelation of the word. We have to meditate on the word day and night. Now, the Lord had given me a, a vision a couple years ago, and he said, I saw the, in my mind's eyes, I was worshiping, I saw the angels come into a room, and they had a, these, these swords, and on the sword had Hebrews 4.12 about the word of God is more powerful than a two-edged sword. I'm going to read that in a minute. And, and what the angels did, they thrusted the swords into every one of our abdomens. Yeah. And, and he said, the famine of the word is over. Now... In order, in order for us to really move in what God has for us, we have got to know, one of the things is we have to know the Word. Yeah. We can't read it every other three days. In, in, the, in, in um, the Old Testament, when, when the, the Israelites were out in the wilderness, they had to get the manna each day, right? And I know I've shared this before. They couldn't get it for three days because if they did, it would turn worms where, where they were in the manna, and it was gross and disgusting. Now, I would have been one of those that would have wanted to get it for five days, trust me. Like, I'm going to get it all, you know? And the Lord's like, no, you need to come before me daily. Yeah. We need to get before him and get fed daily. We need to meditate on the word daily for, for that breakthrough to occur. And so God says he's, he's just releasing a new hunger over all the people of God, not just here, over all of us to meditate on the word. The Bible says in Joshua, when you meditate on the word day and night, therein you will have good success and you will prosper. I take that literally. It's life. It sustains us. That, that was a turning point for me when I got saved in 1979. I was only about 12 at the time. But when I got saved, I had, I, we didn't have internet. I didn't know about conferences. I didn't know about anything other than the fact that if I needed change, because I was about to kill myself, I didn't care if I lived or died. I was in that place of depression. I had panic attacks. I didn't care. I, I was rebellious. I, I just had no hope. And people spoke to me about the gospel, and of course I thought they were all crazy, and like some of the young people and some people here that roll their eyes and think this is a bunch of baloney, there's going to come a day where you're going to cry out to the Lord, because we cannot make it without him. Amen. We all have a choice, and I was an atheist, I told people, I don't believe in God, leave me alone, this is boring, this is ridiculous, but then one day, right. <laughs> I thought, Lord, the person said to me, what do you have to lose? Right. I thought, oh, what do I have to lose? To kill myself, depression, hopelessness, despair. You know, what do I have to lose? And so she said, it's free. Give them a chance. But I thought, well, I'm not letting these crazy Christians know that I'm a, I, want, I want Jesus because they're all like, hallelujah and praise the Lord. I just thought it was so ridiculous. And so <laughs> then I became one. But, but you know what happened? I mean, God just got a hold of me. But here's, the, here's what happened. I got a hold of the word. And I meditated on the word because, and I told the Lord, I said, I'm going to give you one year. And you know, a lot of y'all heard this, but I'm going to give you one year. And if you don't change my life, I'm going back to my old lifestyle like he really was threatened by me. But that was my prayer. But God met me where I was at. And I thought, man, I said, I have to find out what's in the word. What does the word say? So the first scripture that the Lord placed on my heart that really did a number on me was in Luke 137. And it says that with God, absolutely nothing shall be called impossible. And I thought, well, Lord, I have so many impossible situations that I feel in my life, I have to see what you can do here. And I mean, one thing after another, and I'm telling you, it was supernatural. Now, I did pray. I, I got up early in the morning. I worked for the airlines, and I would get up at 3.30 in the morning. When you want something bad enough, right. you will do it. That's right. Got up and would pray and would, you know, go into work and and would just meditate on the word because I wanted to see breakthrough. I needed breakthrough in my life. I couldn't take where I was at. And, and little by little, I saw Elena Fetch used to work at the airline. So she saw, she's my spiritual daughter in the Lord. She got saved there. And, and the Lord did a number in her life as well. A wild child, like all of us. <laughs> we were just crazy. You know, listen, we became on fire for Jesus. We were on fire for the devil. Right? How many of us lived for the devil at one point? 
because we didn't know. We didn't know until the light came. And he said, I'm offering you a better way. See, the enemy tries to say to you, this is boring. This is so corny. Like, why do you want to do this? And I'm speaking to some young people here. Because I'm going to tell you, the Lord said to me, he's going to break that boredom spirit off of you. Where the enemy has blinded your eyes. Where the enemy has tried to keep you in this stalemate. You think you're getting over. Well, he's getting over. But see, God's going to break through. Because that's the goodness of the Lord. He loves you too much to let you stay in that stinky place. I've been there. I know. Nothing new under the sun. No new drug, no new partying thing, nothing new under the sun. God is the only one who can fulfill, who can fulfill what we're longing for. And it seems so wrong. Like I remember people would tell me, this is what Jesus wants to do for you. And I'm like, I have to go to church? It seems so boring to me. I remember I was in Brazil, and I said to my one friend, I said, oh, I feel so sorry for her. She just wants to go to church all the time. When I come back, I'm going to take her out to the clubs in New York City. <laughs> Meanwhile, who's committing suicide? Who's overdosing on drugs? Who's in illicit sex? And I'm going to take her to New York City, right? So, but God had a breakthrough. He, see, the, the enemy, in 2 Corinthians 4.4, 4, it says that the God of this world blinds our eyes. He blinds our understanding. He lets us think it's greener on the other side, and it's not, right? I mean, you know, Clarissa, right? It's not. So the Lord wants us to understand the goodness of the Lord yeah. and what he wants to do for us. The Holy Spirit said to me, I am, re I am going to release a, a prayer movement uh, whatever you want to call, I just know a prayer movement where we're going to be running to the altars. We're uh, young kids. I saw young kids. I saw teenagers that God's breaking them off of this rebellion and boredom thing. But that's what God's doing for all of us. We can't be indifferent any longer. God, and, and we're going to talk about the passion and fire of God today. And so the words that come out of our mouth create our reality. And God is saying to us, what are you speaking? What words are you, what's coming out? What, what are you living by here? And that we don't want, to, you know, we don't want that to happen. So um, I wrote here, it may sound, all right, no, I didn't write this. This is, whatever direction your words lead your mind, body and environment will follow. You hear me? Whatever direction your words lead, what directions are your words leading you into? All right, if you use positive language, and again, this wasn't from a born again thing, but if you use godly faith language about yourself and your ability to learn new skills, achieve new goals, and rise above difficulties, then what's, um, that's what lends to show up externally. Likewise, if you continually say things that affirm incompetence, echo hopelessness, nurture anxiety, or fuel pessimism, then that also will shape your reality. Right? It may sound fanciful, but over time, your world will morph to mirror your words. Wow, right? So we don't want, we want, we want it to morph um, into what God has for us. So let's see if this is where that is. Hey, Peter. <laughs> Just show me how to do it single. 35 years we've been doing this That's together. right. Not this, but. This is one you want? No. Yeah, we'll get there. All right, that's fine. All right, so. <laughs> Tag team. Have mercy on my soul, please. All right, so listen. All right, we're good. We're good. <laughs> I'm not giving him the mic all right, right now. So, so. I have my own. Oh, no. <laughs> you, can, you can butt in anytime you want, honey. All right, so Romans 8, 17 in, in Philip's uh, translation. The Bible says that we are joint ears with Christ. And so it says here in Romans 8, 17, if we are his children, we share his treasures. Last week, the Lord spoke to me and said that we have to contend for our inheritance. What's our inheritance? Are the covenant promises of God, right? And so all that Christ claims as his will belong to all of us well. All of us as well. Yes, if we share in his suffering, we share certainly in his glory. All right? Romans 8, 17 in the Amplified. And if we are his children, then we are his heirs. Do you understand? We are his joint heirs. This is, what, uh, this is our inheritance. 
And it says here, heirs of God and fellow heirs with Christ, sharing his spiritual blessings and inheritance, if indeed we share in his suffering, so that we will share in his glory. So God wants us to understand, first of all, that we are his heirs, right? And, um, oh. Jesus, help me. All right, well, joint heirs, I want that one. I'm sorry, you guys. Not that one. All right, next. Oh, so I just hit this? All right, what number am I on? Okay. All right, so we're joint heirs. So, I mean, obviously, I know it's not that difficult to know what this means. It says an heir who shares an inheritance with one or more people. So we are his heir. He says we're seated in heavenly places, right, with him. Everything that God has for us is us, is for us. And so, I mean, think about that reality. We have got to meditate on that. Right. Are we all, I'm not operating in everything that God has for us yet, right. but I will be. But I mean, I am pressing into the Lord. I am sitting at his feet. I am worshiping him. And it's just been a marvelous time yeah. that I had with him. Man, I tell you, you want hope? Sit in his presence. You want to get out of depression? Sit in his presence. You need wisdom? Sit in his presence. Meditate on the word. You know, that's what's a turning point. That's what turns us around regardless of our situation. We're in the Hebraic month of Adar, and this is a month to leap for joy right? The joy of the Lord is our strength. When we're in depression and sadness and sorrow, it's, it, our strength is zapped. So God is saying, listen, I know you're going through a hard time, but I'll give you that supernatural joy. Choose to worship. Choose to rejoice in me. Keep your eyes fixed on me. That's supernatural, but in the natural, it doesn't make sense, does it? But that's what God requires. So listen to this scripture. I love this. In Jeremiah 23, 29, the Amplified, it says, is not my word like fire that consumes all that cannot endure the test, says the Lord, and like a hammer that breaks in pieces the rock of most stubborn resistance. Now, why do you think we talk about um, decreeing the word in faith when we're praying? And you listen, God knows our problems. He's, you know, I mean, he knows what's on our heart. But when we're decreeing the word, I need you to picture it shattering strongholds. Picture shattering that depression. Picture it shattering that, that fear that so many are battling. Shatter that, that you know, a spirit of suicide. That's what the word does when you're in faith, when you're worshiping. The spirit of God gives you a word, man. That's a breaker that comes upon the word, comes upon your life. We've all experienced it. Only God can get you out of the, the place of despair. When you're really hurting and you're in that very difficult place, that's for real. I'm not minimizing that. But God in his love and mercy saying, listen, I'm going to get you out of it because you're more than a conqueror through Christ who strengthens you. I can get you out of that place, that lie where, like, the bullying that takes place. And even all the social media, we were watching something on, on, uh, on, law, on TV that talked about social media. And they said that with the teenage group, teenage uh, group of kids, that the, the suicide rate has gone up over 100%. Because of the bullying, because of the lying, you're trying to keep up to an image that's not even reality. See, the reality is, what is God saying about us? And this competition thing that goes on. See, we have, to, we have to get our minds fixed on Jesus, not on what social media, and Lord knows, not on what the media is saying, because Lord knows we'd really be depressed. So the word of God is like fire. And so listen to this in Leviticus 6, 12, and 13. It says that the fire on the altar shall be kept burning, and it shall not be allowed to go out. Well, our heart is the altar of the Lord. We have God. It's our responsibility to keep that fire burning. Listen, God has called us to be passionate warriors for Jesus Christ. We are not just as passive, passive people. I mean, you can be. That's your choice. But going to church once a week and doing your thing. That's, listen, God is saying right now he's calling the passionate warriors, the fire-burning, breathing Christians to rise up. Because the world needs passion. They need to see the miracle-working power of God. That's for all of us. Every place that you are in, in company with, you have that ability to cause that breaker to break out and change the atmosphere wherever we're at. We need this. We have got to rise up. We have got to all press in. When we're all coming together, it's all the different anointings, all what you've experienced that causes that combustion of fire, the combustion of his glory to come and break through. We need each other. 
That's why it was so diabolical how the enemy tried to shut us all down and prevent us in the name of, a pre, you know, from not getting COVID. It sounded like a real noble thing, but this was a demonic setup to keep people isolated, keep people held back. And so, my God, I mean, I'm not saying it wasn't re right, real. And initially, we have f uh, family members that are in science, that are working, we, uh, you know, COVID nurses, and se et cetera. It's not like it was. They know now what to do. We have medicine that helps us, okay? We're not all going to die. We have medicine that helps us. There's, there's a lot of different things, and I can send you tons of information on it. Do we have to be careful? I'm not saying be, you know, silly. You, got, you have to do what's right for you, but we're good. All right? And so things have shifted. And so, but see, again, we've got to get before the Lord. What is the Spirit of God saying to you? I want that fire burning. I don't want it to be a dim light. And what is that? How do we develop that passion? It, it comes through. Part of it is meditation. We're, we're going to be talking about prayer. We're going to be talking about the armor of God. We're going to be talking about worship. All of that is combined. But if you don't know what the Word is saying, how are, it's, it's, our, it's our guidepost. How are we going to know how to move forward? How do we know what the world is saying versus what God is saying? God's word has to have final say. So, all right, let me see if I can get this. All right, in Jesus' name. There we go. All right. Um, I learned quick. So uh, the next scripture here, I, I typed it out in the Amplified. It says, the fire in the altar shall be kept burning. It shall not be allowed to go out. I just read that. Now here, the priest shall burn wood on it every morning. Who's the priest? Us. What's the wood? The word. And he shall arrange the burnt offering on it and offer the fat portions of the peace offerings up in smoke. The fire shall burn, be burning continually on the altar. It shall not be allowed to go out. Never. We can never allow this fire to go out. And so I know in times past it has. Uh, listen, I'm going to tell you the truth. It, the fire went out in my heart a while ago. And, and when it did, it was bad. I became very passive. And, and what wasn't I doing? I wasn't in the Word. I mean, listen, I heard the Word. I would hear a scripture. I wasn't in sin. But what I did was I withdrew. I, there was disappointments. We all get disappointed, Right. And I thought, you know what, God. And so that's just what the enemy, and I just pulled back. And I had pulled back, and it was ever so slowly. And, and I became really passive, and the Lord really had to deal with me on this. And, um, you know, and I repented for it. I mean, you know, listen, God loves us so much. He's not looking to beat us over the head with a hammer. He's looking to bring us into that place of his fruitfulness. He wants us to be fruitful people. And so... You know, I had to, I had to really readjust and, and repent. I, I had to forgive the Lord. I was upset with him over certain things like, why, you know? And then I just knew that that's not a good question to ask him. I just needed to just say, Lord, I choose to trust you no matter what, right? I choose to trust you with all my heart. And uh, so I just had to, I said, Lord, I want that fire again. I want, I want to be infused with your holy presence. I love, I, I, I've been hot. And I've been cold for the Lord. It's much better to be hot. It's much better to be passionate for Jesus, trust me. Because when you're in that place of indifference and passivity, it stinks. It really is. So I had to learn. I had to get back in that place. Fire is a purifier. I said, Lord, purify my heart. You know, I, I know that your word drives out darkness. Your word sets us free. Your word brings light. It illuminates me. It gives me wisdom. See, we believe in deliverance here, and we pray for deliverance, and, and we believe that Jesus was manifested to destroy the works of the enemy. But let me tell you something. When you meditate on the word and you get a revelation and you're in union with the word, you talk about liberty. You talk about breakthrough. He does not want us to know who we are in Christ. He doesn't want us to know the authority that we truly have as children of God. He doesn't want us to know that the voice of the Lord thunders and that we can release the word of the Lord and that we can create and cause things to shatter in faith. He doesn't want us to recognize that. So what does he do? He keeps us in a place of despair, hopelessness, where we're just focused on our problems, where we're not meditating on the word. We're not in that intimate place, worshiping Jesus. See, that's what would cause us to be ineffective. 
And God is saying, no more of that. Worship me. Get, keep your eyes fixed upon me. Keep your eyes, you know, declaring the word. Declare the word. Because we are dread champions. That's what the Bible says in Jeremiah. He says, I've called you to be dread champions. And that's not just for any, meeny, miny, mo group of people. That's for all of us. And man, when you're flowing in, in the assignment that God has for you, oh my gosh, talk about the strength and the joy of God. Talk about being that conqueror and doing more than you ever thought you can do. It's for us and our family, but it's for out there. I used to minister all the time in, in prisons and, and go out and minister to those that didn't know Jesus who were rotten and mean to you when you spoke to them, but they, God still got a hold of them. That's the power of the word. And so Jesus is encouraging us now to have that zeal. The zeal of the Lord has consumed me. In another scripture, in Jeremiah 29 in the NIV, it says, His word is in my heart like a fire, shut up in my bones. See, that's what has to happen. The word has to be shut up in our bones. And that's where I'm at. And that's what the Lord's saying to me. He's saying, listen, I want you to allow the word to, have, to be speaking to you daily. Speaking to you daily. No matter what you're at, no matter what you're going through, you get afraid, you hear something. What's the word that comes out? Well, I've not given you a spirit of fear, but a power of love and of sound mind. You're gonna let, what, are you going to let the fear and doubt drown you out or the word take authority over it? So I, I typed out a bunch of scriptures here um, that have to do with uh, the word and fear and all this other stuff. Okay. So in 2 Timothy 1.6, we, um, we're all familiar with this. It says... This is why I would remind you to stir up, rekindle the embers of, fan the flame of, and keep burning the gracious gift of God, the inner fire that's in you by means of laying on of my hands with those of the elders at your ordination. It's up to us to stir up the fire, to stir up the flame. Now, when Timothy, when Paul spoke this to Timothy, he was going through the most difficult of times. Listen, the Roman government, they were after the Christians, looking to kill them to destroy them if they stood for their faith. And Paul spoke to him and said, stir up your faith. Listen, we need to stir up our faith now. We cannot be in passivity. I'm telling you, God is saying to us, we must prepare for what's ahead. And I'm not trying to scare you. God has given us a plan. He never leaves us nor forsake us, but stir it up. He's saying, stir up, rekindle the embers of your flame, rekindle the embers of, of the fire within you. Don't allow the word to become dormant. Decree the word, worship the word, sing the word. It's powerful. Yeah. So in Psalm 119, 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. We need guidance, right? It's the word. You have a lamp, and you, you put the lamp there. If you're all dark, it's all dark. It, it shows you the path in which to go, right. right? It gives us instruction. It gives us direction. That's what the word of God does. The word sets our heart on fire. It does. It's one of the things that sets our heart on fire. So God wants us to be passionate, full of zeal, dedicated, perseverance. He wants the word ignited within us. And we, he wants us to be consumed by his word. Psalm 119, verse 9 says, uh, How shall a young man or woman cleanse his way? By taking heed and keeping watch on himself according to your word, conforming his life to it. Now, as I said, we do deliverance here, we do inner healing, we minister. But if you're struggling in pornography and sexual sin, one of the, one of the instructions in here is to meditate on the word. Get the word that has to do with living in purity and consecration. It says, how can a young man, that's, uh, women are involved in this too, how can a young man or woman cleanse their ways? This is what the word says. The, the word is alive. It's so powerful. Jesus is the word. See, so the word gives us instruction. Amen? Amen? Psalm 119, verse 28 in the Passion says, My life's strength melts away with grief and sadness. Come strengthen me and encourage me with your words. If you feel weak and you feel like you need to be strengthened, allow the word of God to encourage you and strengthen you. Listen, when I get in that stinky place where you're feeling depressed and sad, you wake up. You know, I mean, I can be like, oh, you know, the one day. And then I wake up the next morning. Has that ever happened to you? And you're like, oh oh my God, I want to throw myself off the roof. Well, that happens. But what are you going to do? You have to, I have to like, oh my gosh, what is going on here? And then I have to get in the Word and I worship and then it shifts again. 
You know, the enemy is saying, whose voice is louder? Right. Who are you going to listen to? Are you going to go and flow with that negative mindset or are you going to start worshiping? And sometimes it's a challenge. I don't always feel like worshiping when I wake up. You know, you make your coffee or whatever you like to drink in the morning. I make it really, really, really strong coffee. Really? And you get up, amen, sister. And we, we worship, you know, and I'm like, Lord, I'm sitting here. And, I, you know, you get distracted. I want to look at a magazine. This is at 6 o'clock in the morning. I'm like, no. So you have to discipline yourself and say, no, I'm not going there. I'm not going there. I'm, listen, he does it to all of us. Every single one of us. And so it's up to us to keep pressing through, right? So I want strength in my life. I said, Lord, I need your strength. I need your supernatural strength. Now, Romans, we know this scripture. Do not be conformed to the world any longer with its superficial values and customs. Huh. But be transformed and progressively changed. That's how we change as you mature spiritually. And, of course, by obeying the word. By renewing of your mind, focusing on godly values and ethical at attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good, acceptable, and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Don't be conformed to the world. The world's not going to tell me how I'm going to live my life. Right. It's not okay to be sleeping around. It's not okay to live with people and not be married. It's not okay to go against the guidelines of the word of God. It's why? Because God wants to be me? No, because he wants to protect you because he knows how hurtful it is when, you're, when that per partner leaves you, when there was no commitment there. He knows how devastating that is. He doesn't want you to be hurt. He wants you to live in covenant and be blessed. See, everything that God has in the word is for our benefit, not to harm us. So again, the famine of the word is over. Now, John 15, 7. This is really important. If you remain in me or abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. See, we have to have that abiding place. And so I wrote here, how do you know if the word is abiding in you? Well, I said it before, the word speaks to you, the word speaks to me. If it's alive in you, it'll come up in your heart. So let's say you have a situation that occurs and you get like, you know, really ambushed. You feel like you're getting ambushed by it. Well, then what, what is the word speaking to you? Is the word coming up in you? I know this is simple, but it's just what the word the Lord had me prepare for today. We have to then allow the word to have final say. Not, yeah, but then we get in the natural. Yeah, but, you know, this can happen to me or that. But what does the word say? What is God saying? That with God, nothing shall be called impossible. Mary, when Mary was telling us about her finances, about getting a house, and the Lord told her to give that portion that she saved to her, her son, you know, she's like, Lord, I'm going to just trust you. And then there, boom, something happens. Right. See, that's trusting in the Lord. Right. And that's, that's the discipline. That's what he's bringing us all through into a greater depth and a greater understanding of his love for us. And so if you're in a situation and the need rises up, and, you know, if fear rises up or, or if doubt rises up, don't beat yourself up. What you do is then say, okay, Lord, I'm really struggling with this. Help me with it. And then get, your, get the word. Speak the word over yourself. You know, listen, I have to do that all the time. The word has to have final say. And so I just want to encourage everybody. You say this is, again, a simple message. Yeah, it is. But God is simple. He's not complicated. The word sets us free. So he sends his words on assignment. I was thinking of Isaiah 55. It says that his word shall not return void, right? And so uh, let me read it to you. I have it somewhere. I don't know where it is on that thing. Um, but in Isaiah 55, it says here in the Amplified, So will my word be which goes out of my mouth, and it will not return to me void or useless without result, without accomplishing what I desire, and without succeeding in the matter for which I sent it. So our words are given assignment. And so empty, the word void there is empty or ineffectual. Our words, everything that you have prayed is not empty and ineffectual. It's not. Oh, how did I, oh I didn't get up there. All right, so, um, so now... Here's what the Lord was really speaking to me about. Um, in Acts chapter 2, in the New King James, it says, And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers. You know, this is when the Holy Ghost came upon them, and they were all together, and they, they were pressing into Holy Spirit. They wanted more of him. And so that word steadfastly there means to persevere, and it, it means to be consistent and intense 
intense focus. They were continually steadfastly in that presence. Then when you go over to Acts 4.31 and Amplified, it says, when they had prayed, hear me, the place where they were meeting together was shaken. I'm telling you, the physical building was shaken. A sign of God's presence, and they were all filled with Holy Spirit and began to speak the word of God with boldness and courage. This is what God said to me. He said, this is where I'm bringing my church. He said, this is the kind of passion I want you to have. The word of God in Hebrews 4.12, and then I'm going to close. In Hebrews 4.12, is alive and full of power. Jesus is the word. When you look at the word, I heard a preacher say that when you look at the word and you hold it up, it's breathing. You'll see it moving because it has breath. It's alive. It says that the word is full of power, making it active, operative, energizing, and effective. It is sharper than any two-edged sword, penetrating to the dividing line of the breath of soul, life of soul, and the immortal spirit and of joints. Ah, what happened? Repent. No, honey. That's the fire of God. It's just jumping around over here. Um, that's all right. Okay. And the marrow of the deepest parts of our nature, exposing and sifting and analyzing and judging his very thoughts and purposes of the heart. The bottom line here is alive. It'll show you your downfalls. It'll show you where you're at. You want to know if you're in sin, read the word. You want to see if you're, you know, walking in faith, read the word. And the word that he gives us isn't to harm us. It's to bring us into a greater place, a deeper place in him of breakthrough and favor and the blessing of the Lord. He loves us. He doesn't want, he's not looking to punish us. He loves us. He's saying, listen, I want you to obey my word. If I'm giving you instruction, do it. I want you to know that I want you to walk in the fullness and the abundance of what I have for you. The Bible says in John 10, 10, that the thief comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He says, but I come to give you that life more abundantly. I come to turn your situation around. We sang it earlier. I come to turn your heart around where you've been wounded, where you've been hurt, where you feel alone. You feel that you've been abandoned. God is saying, I will never leave you nor forsake you. So listen, when they prayed, the place they were meeting together was shaken. See, God is shaking us all up. He's shaking the world up. He's shaking all of us up. He wants us to get to that place where we believe beyond, where we go beyond. Where we're not limiting God anymore. Yeah, but, yeah, but you don't understand. Yeah, but, no, but, but God. What is God saying now? We have to cross over. And then I'll close with this. I love the portion in Romans where uh, Abraham believed. It says here in Romans 19, 21 through 21 in the Passion. In spite of being nearly 100 years old, when the promise of having a son was made, his faith was so strong that it could not be undermined by the fact that he and Sarah were incapable of conceiving a child. He never stopped believing God's promise, for he was made strong in his faith to a father and a child. And because he was mighty in faith, and convinced that God had all the power needed to fulfill his promise, Abraham glorified God. Now, here's the deal. The Lord wants, when he comes back, will he find that faith? He believed. They were 100 years old. Could you imagine Easter getting pregnant right now? (laughs) Oh, my God. Easter's not 100 years old either, okay? Could you imagine? But think about this. He's a God of the miraculous. <laughs> Could you imagine me getting pregnant right now? Come on, it's all of us, right? So, but he's a God of the miraculous. Break the limitations off. Some of you might think, I'll never get married. Baloney. I know ladies that got married at 75. Now, I'm not saying that you're going <laughs> to wait until you're 75. But I'm saying, in spite, he said he could, in another, in another verse, he said he considered God his impotence. Yeah. Don't consider it. Listen, God's got a plan for our nation. He's got a plan for our state. He's got a plan for our homes. I'm telling you, the Spirit of God is going to visit your individual homes. And just like the buildings were shaken, He's going to shake our homes. He's going to shake our regions. He's going to shake 
our churches, our nation. This is what God has in store for us, but it's going to take us to press in, to be diligent, to decree the word, to believe the word. Every single one of us has this in us. Every single one of us. That's what God wants to do. So I'm going to ask you to stand. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. God loves us so much. He wants us to give us him permission to break through in our lives. He wants us to give him permission. Holy Spirit, overshadow me. Holy Spirit, we ask you to break through the limitations in our lives. Holy Spirit, we just thank you that right now you're even removing scales off of our eyes. God, you are a God of hope. And Lord, we choose to have faith in you because your word says in Hebrews 11, 6, that it is impossible to please you without faith. So God, where we have limited you, we repent. God, where we have doubted you, where we don't even think you're going to cause breakthrough in our lives, God, we repent, but we give you permission to take us by the hand. Yeah. And help us yeah. and teach us because he loves us so much. He's not upset with us. He loves us. Yes, he does. And he's a, you heard the word of his compassion. The Bible says in Lamentations that his mercies are new every morning. His compassion is so awesome and great towards us. And I, I was reading this this morning, and I felt like the Lord said, this is a word for somebody. And I brought it here, and um, I want to read it to you out of the passion. Uh, hold on a second here. you are my servant and I have chosen you I have not rejected you do not yield to fear for I'm always near never turn your gaze from me for I am your faithful God I will infuse you with my strength and help you in every situation and I will hold you firmly with my victorious right hand amen and it also says and all who rage against you will be ashamed and disgrace but listen, God is saying, don't be afraid. I'm here to help you. So Holy Spirit, we just thank you that you've not given us a spirit of fear, but a power, love, and of sound mind. Now, I'm going to ask you to come forward. If any of you need prayer, if you're struggling in any of these areas, or you just want to come up to the altar and say, Lord, here I am. I surrender. Do it. Just come on up. And so we just want to pray. We're going to still release some decrees. And that um, we just want to release, the, for those who have to leave, we just want to release you to go. But have faith in God. Know that God has amazing things in store for you. God is, is, is creating an atmosphere. There's going to be school of prayer. And God wants us to, to enter into this deep place unlike anything we've ever experienced.